Hey everybody, welcome to the Who's Number One official press conference I'm going to do live on Facebook and YouTube right now. I'm your host, Michael Sears, coming to you from the Flow Sports headquarters in Austin, Texas. Just came here from the weigh-ins. We're going to go through all the matches, uh, all eight matches live here. We're going to start from the bottom, work our way up to the main event of Gordon versus Mateus. But right away, let's get into it. The first match, if we want to play the uh, asset for William Tackett versus Jason Rao. Here we go. This is our very first match of the night. I mean, it's going to be a crazy car, and we're starting off with a with a great one uh, right off the bat. Let's let's uh, kick it off with uh, I'll kick it off with Jason. Jason Rao, how are you feeling going into this match? Uh, I'm feeling I'm feeling good. I'm super excited. Um, you know, this is an awesome card to be on. Got a great opponent in William, and I'm I'm really excited to showcase my jujitsu tomorrow. Same question for you, William. How are you feeling right now? Feeling great, man. Uh, had a really good fight camp. Leading up to this, you know, we were prepping for the ADCC trials, which is no longer happening. So um, I was just able to put full throttle into this, and um, yeah, I feel great. It's going to be a good match. So you guys have uh, competed against each other once before. William won on points at ADCC trials. Jason, what do you think uh, has changed? What do you think will be different this time around? Um, I think a big thing is the is the rule set is different. You know, ADCC trials, matches are six minutes, uh, half points, half no points, big emphasis on wrestling. Tomorrow night we have 15 minutes sub only, so I think uh, just that in itself is a uh, is a big difference. But also, you know, this is a year and a half later. Uh, Williams definitely, you know, been on the up and up since then, and I think we've both matured as grapplers. So I think you're going to see a similar type of match in terms of you know us both attacking each other, but we're just both uh, better at this point than, than our last meeting. Uh, yeah, same question for you, uh, William. You're pretty young. You're 20 years old. Uh, you were obviously very young the last time you guys fought. What do you think's changed? Uh, how much better of a grappler do you think you are now than the last time you guys met at ACC trials? So we first fought when I was 17, and I'm actually only 19 now. But um, I feel like oh, wow. I've gotten a lot more physical. Um, I'm lifting a lot heavier. Um, my cardio is better, everything. I just feel a lot stronger physically. And um, I feel like I've gotten a lot more technical, just starting to understand the game as my brain develops and I you know, become a better pr practitioner overall. Jason, what do you think the fans can expect out of this match tomorrow? I think they're going to see an exciting match. I mean, I believe we're both going to attack each other for the whole 15 minutes if it comes to that. And, uh, you know, it's definitely it's the first match on the card, so there's obviously some bigger names on it, but I think it's going to be one of the more exciting matches of the night. Same, same question to you, William. Uh, I think it's going to be great. I think that it's going to be action-packed start to finish. I don't think either one of us are going to look to stall. I think we're both going to hunt for the submission the whole time. And, um, yeah, I think we'll both push the pace and make it really exciting, you know. I don't know if we'll be fight of the night or not because I think that we'll be really um, close, evenly matched. But we'll definitely try. So I think it's going to be a good match from start to finish. Definitely tune in if you're um, interested in seeing a lot of submissions. Uh, before I get rid of you guys, I want to hear you both. I want to I want to hear your prediction for the main event. Jason, what are you thinking? The main event. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, I think you got to give it to Gordon. Um, you know, 30 minutes is a long time. I think he's, you know, number one in the world for a reason. I could see Mateus definitely playing a smart game and, and avoiding him for a little bit, but ultimately I think I think Gordon's going to win. No questions. Same with you, William. I see Mateus kind of neutralizing the game just a little bit for at least, you know, 10, 15 minutes of the – of the match, and then I see Gordon starting to kind of pick apart Matos's game and eventually find his way to either a leg lock or a back take in the match. All right, cool. Very, very cool hearing you guys' insight on that. This is a match between the two of you. I'm really looking forward to it. It's a, it's a great match to kick things off. We know it's going to be exciting. You guys both always going after it, going for the finish. So uh, tomorrow night, 190 pounds, William Tackett versus Jason Rao in 15 minutes sub only uh, action. Looking forward to it. Thank you guys very much. Thanks, Mike.
All right, just a second. Just a second. We'll be getting uh, Tony Ramos and Nikki Ryan in here. We'll be getting set up right now. All right, guys, so our next matchup here is pretty intriguing. Uh, for our wrestling fans out there really familiar with Tony Ramos, wrestled for the University of Iowa, now he's a coach at the University of North Carolina. And, of course, everybody knows Nikki Ryan from the Dana Hurd Death Squad. So this is a 170-pound match, 15 minutes. They're all 15 minutes besides Gordon and Mateus. So let's go ahead and uh, bring these guys in. First off, Tony Ramos. Uh, while Nikki's getting set up, I'll ask you, uh, Tony, what, what, what led you to – Go ahead and do a grappling match. Yeah, so biggest thing for me is um, I retired from wrestling about a year and a half ago, and I always get that itch to compete again. Um, but I wanted to do it in something else that was similar to wrestling, um, you know, that other wrestlers could look at and maybe cross-train into or bridge the, grap bridge the gap of when, you know, the current wrestling season isn't going on. Um, for senior level, there's really a season that's laid out, and there is some downtime. Uh, so trying to... Uh, you know, lay another pathway for wrestlers to make some money, gain some more fans, uh, and, you know, just brand themselves a little more. N Nikki, what was your reaction as well when uh, you heard that Tony Ramos, uh, someone without a jiu-jitsu or submission grappling background, but a very uh, accredited wrestler, uh, wanted a match with you? Uh, you know, I was definitely very surprised at first, um, but I was also pretty excited. Um, you know, I think these crossover matches are, you know, a good thing for both sports. Um, you know, you're going to have jiu-jitsu fans seeing a wrestler compete. And you're going to see wrestling fans uh, watch a jiu-jitsu uh, competitor compete. So uh, I was definitely very excited for it. Um, and also, I feel like it's a, it's a good opportunity for me to, you know, see where my wrestling stands at. You know, Tony's one of the best wrestlers in the world. So, you know, if, if I'm able to put him down like, even once, um, you know, I'm going to be very confident going into the next ADCC and my wrestling abilities. So you're going to wrestle with him a little bit. Uh, we'll see. Um, I, I, you'll definitely see some wrestling exchanges, um, whether it be from the feed or me coming up from guard. Tony, so uh, obviously when we put this out on the Flow Grappling page, a lot of people were like, oh, why are you doing this? This guy doesn't have any experience. Uh, what do you think is uh, – where do you think those people are wrong about it? How, do you, how competitive do you think this match is going to be? I think the hardest thing for them to grasp is the concept of, you know, the – the competitiveness of uh, wrestlers. We've been competing our whole life. We've been through high level events and, you know, we don't go into something thinking we don't have a chance at winning or that we can win. Um, and that's kind of where I'm at with it. And then the transition has been pretty smooth for me. You know, the last two and a half months uh, of training and working out over in Chapel Hill with Elevate MMA, just the learning curve has been extremely fast because the, my, my body positioning and the control I had in wrestling has really helped me translate and pick up a lot of the things in grappling. Have you studied a lot of uh, tape on, on Nikki going into this? Have you watched some of his matches? I've watched some of his matches, and you know the coaches have prepared me for a lot of the things I might see. Um, and then I get a lot of the backseat drivers who are sending me messages on Instagram and Twitter. You know, you need to practice this. You need to be ready for this. You need to watch that. Um, so it's been a pretty fun experience on that end. Uh Nikki, how do you think a match will be different going into it with a, a high-level wrestler? Who, I mean, it's going to be a different look than you're used to. What do you, what kind of differences do you think you'll you'll see in this match? Um, yeah, you know, he's definitely going to have a much different game compared to uh, all the other jiu-jitsu competitors. But um, you know, I've gone against you know like decent-level wrestlers in, in training and stuff like that. So uh, I think I think I'll be prepared for it. Tony, is uh is this going to be your only uh? venture into grappling or could we see you potentially try and do something else qualify for adcc or any, anything like that i hope not um i hope this definitely opens up the doors a lot more for you know not just myself but other wrestlers um after they you know go out and see the type of environment that you guys have created the opportunities that you guys create um and definitely you know at first adccs weren't really um 
on my radar uh, just because I felt like, you know, I probably need a lot more time to prepare and kind of train for that. And I think trials were, you know, in November. Uh, but with the postponement, who knows? You know, it could be an option. And, you know, maybe um, who I forget what his name is, whoever's running the ADCCs, uh, you know, sees this and sends me an invite afterwards. Mo. Shout, shout, oh, yeah, that's who it is, Mo. Shout out to Mo, right watching right now. So, uh, Nikki, what do you think the fans can expect out of this match? Um, you know, I mean, you can expect the same thing from me. You know, I'm going to come out, try and push the pace, uh, and, you know, just relentless attacks. All right, cool, cool. I, uh, I'm very excited about this match. Pretty interesting. I, I want to give uh, some credit to Tony where it's due because, I mean, a lot of people wouldn't have the balls to come out and do this. to just step right into the top level at, in a completely different sport than they do. And I'm really looking forward to this one. This will be a 170-pound match, 15 minutes. Uh, Nikki Ryan, Tony Ramos, thank you very much, guys. Thank, thank you. you. All right, so this will bring us into our third matchup. This is actually the first female match. We have two female matches on the card. This is between two uh, Black Belt World Champions and Ogi. Uh, they both 135-pound weight limit. They both weighed in a little bit under that earlier today. We got Luisa Montero from Atos and Natalie Hibero from Czech Matt are going to be going at it. So let's go ahead and queue up this uh, asset for them. Good, thank Hi, good, you. How thank are you? you? Uh, I'm super excited for this fight, um, especially because it's against Natalie Ribeiro, which I think is one of the best girls nowadays. I really like to fight against the best, uh, so then I, I know uh where i am you know i know how my jiu-jitsu is is going so and like if you win you know it's it's something big you know so i'm pretty excited for this fight well i feel i don't know i'm very glad as i said before i'm very honored to fight um a great uh, a great athlete as luisa montero is and i'm very excited and as she said is i'm fighting against one of the best women uh in jiu-jitsu so yeah i'm really excited and i'm happy and yeah let's see how it goes <laughs> so you guys fought one time before correct yes yes how did how did that one go louisa how did it go it was one advantage and was a tough fight. It was, was just one gi? advantage. This was a gi match. Yeah, it was in the gi. Okay, yeah. so this is a, this is a no gi match. Uh, you're both uh, no gi world champions. Are you? Uh, first, I'll go one by one. I, I'd imagine both of you guys are probably looking at ADCC as as a big goal of yours, huh, Louisa. Yeah, I am. I am really looking forward to to fight ADCC next year. So now I don't train just with the gi. Like even if I don't have a tournament, I am training like both gi and no gi, because to, to make sure that I'm gonna be prepared next year, you know. So, yeah. How, how about you, Natalie? Are you looking uh, forward to ADCC to add that to your no gi world title? 
Yes, I am. Of course, I think everybody, everybody wants to to all um, uh, be part of ADCC, and I'm one of these people. And yeah, I hope I can make it. I don't know. I think I have to go to Brazil to get the trials and everything. But as Luisa said, it's not only gi that I'm training. I'm training no gi too, at least once or twice a week. So just to keep the game on as an no gi. And so I can be prepared for next year. All right. So we have uh, Natalie Hibero and from Checkmat and Luisa Montero from Atos going at in a 135-pound match tomorrow. This is going to be a great one. This is going to be, I mean, two of the best women in the game. Like you guys said, gi and no gi. You're going no gi tomorrow night. But thank you very much, guys. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All right. So next we'll go into our... Fourth match on the card, halfway there. This is an exciting one. They fought two times before. Gio Martinez from 10th Planet, Paulo Miao from Unity. Neither one of these guys is, or not Unity anymore, Cicero Costa. Uh, neither one of these guys has even competed in this entire year. Paulo Miao, who usually is, is very active, has not competed, I believe, since November. So it'll be interesting to see how things could change. The last two times worth points. This time it's sub only, but I think we'll see the same type of action from them. Let's go ahead and go into that asset. All right, guys, so there was your little uh, promo video for Paulo Miao versus Gio Martinez. They're, they're both sitting here, so let's go ahead and go to it. Uh, we got Gio on the top, Paulo on the bottom. First off, Gio, how are you feeling going into this thing? You know, I'm really pumped up, really hyped up to go out there and, you know, showcase my skills against, you know, one of the best in the world, Paulo Miao. How about you, Paulo? How are you feeling? Yeah, man, it's, it's a really good opportunity to to put a good show me and you and i'm sure this is gonna be a great fight Paulo, so you're looking you're sitting at 199 wins already in your black belt career which is pretty crazy that's an, a, an immense amount of wins how does it feel to you that you're going into this you might have 200 wins at black belt already uh i think he, bjj year yeah bjj years i don't know if it's, it's correct but <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but let's, if they say, they say, you know, so, so let's try to yeah. get this 200 wins, you know. I'll trust them. Yeah, you compete all over the place, so you very easily could have uh, missed something. Gio, you lost the last two on points. Obviously, this is different rules, but uh, how do you think things might be different this time around for you, Gio? You know, point <clears throat> points never been, like, my number one forte. You know, it's, not, it's never been my number one goal to win matches by points. I like to win by submissions, you know, or or at least go for the most submissions. And um, you know, this is more my style. This is more kind of game that I like to play. I like to be free out there and not think about too much about points. Think about just trying to get the submissions and not get submitted. That's my game, and that's what I'll I'll be going for. And I'm excited to have a match that's just based on submissions. Uh, Paulo, you haven't competed all year. Actually, neither one of you has. But Paulo, you usually compete so much. You and your brother are all over the place competing. How does it feel to finally be back competing after a long layoff? Yeah, it's good, you know, like, uh, like, uh, I've been like maybe almost one year without a match. So it's a good match, you know, it's a good match to do. It was a good event too. Yeah, I'm glad to, to be part of this. Gio, so, uh, what do you think the fans can expect out of this one tomorrow between you and Paulo Mio? You know, uh, me and Paulo, we, we like to always put on a good show. We like to really go out there and try to get the win. So both of us are going to be hungry to get that win and, I know, <clears throat> I know both of us are going <clears> to <throat> go out there and attack, you know, so I think a lot of people are going to see a lot of cool submissions, a lot of cool transitions, and, you know, just a unique style of jiu-jitsu. He has a really good flexible style, really diverse style. He can play good from top and bottom, and I feel the same same about myself. I could play from top or the bottom. We'll be demonstrating a lot of good techniques, a lot of original style, and um, I think people are going to be ready to see a really solid hype match for sure. Although a lot of people online seem to think that uh, submission only – is uh 
helps Geo a little bit. How do you feel about submission only rules, and how do you feel <clears throat> your style works for submission only? Yeah, I think him, my style works for ever, ever who's you know. Like yeah. I train to to submit and everything. I don't think the sub sub only who sets you know, like he. I just don't compete to be only the most the most of my career and I, I compete uh, to be only match so it's a good test for me too you know and I like them. All right, guys, thank you very much. So this will be a 145 pound match, uh, 15 minutes, just like the rest. Some submission only. Uh, follow me out. It's Cicero Costa versus Gio Martinez from 10th minute. Thanks a lot, guys. All right, we're working our way up the card. Now, our next match was actually a late replacement. As uh, you probably know, we had Gilbert Burns Durano slated to be in this match, but he got the title shot in the UFC, had to pull out. So we had a great replacement, a local guy here in Austin, Cody Steele, to come in against uh, Dante Leon. Dante Leon obviously has been tearing it up uh, since he took Lucas Lepre's back at ADCC. He's tapped Azaki, tapped Johnny Tama, defeated a whole bunch of people, defeated Hanato Canuto. But Cody Steele is an up-and-comer. He's a newer black belt. Scrappy guy. Uh, these guys both have, they're both good from the feet. They're both Nogi specialists for sure. And I'm really looking forward to this one. Let's go ahead and play the uh, Cody Steele versus Dante Leon match. We got Cody Steele up there on the top, Dante Leon on the bottom. Uh, first off, Dante, how did you feel about this whole turn of events? You thought you were going against Gilbert. All of a sudden, he had to pull out, and then we we found a new match. Where you explain uh, the emotions you went through with that whole thing. My mind that him being uh, on for the UFC title, he was probably going to get bumped uh, for some reason because MMA is kind of like his focus. So it was a little bit upsetting losing that match, but I think Cody is a, a great replacement. He has the same kind of diversity as Gilbert. Um, he's super exciting. He's super dynamic. So I believe that the training camp uh, preparing for Gilbert goes right into preparing for Cody. So I think it was a a, a good kind of like a letdown at first, but then it was a, a really good pickup uh, getting uh, the match with Cody. Cody, uh, what did you think when I came to you and offered you the match with Dante? <clears throat> Man, it was, uh, I was really excited. It was fun. It was funny because um, I was at home just eating. I was hanging out. And uh, when I got the message, you were like, oh, are you healthy? And I was like, oh, man. I think I'm going to get a match on the, on this card. And I was like, man, I hope it's not like someone who's going to like be a leg lock. I was like, man, what if it was with Dante? I'm like, that would just be the sickest match ever. And then ended up offering it. And I was just, me and him were just like super thrilled for it, you know? So I'm excited, you know, I love, I love watching Dante fight and shoot, man, it's going to, it's going to be a good show. Dante, how do you think the match is different with Cody uh, stylistically compared to what you were going to have versus Gilbert? Well, Gilbert's a little bit bigger than Cody. Um, yeah, sure. I, I see Gilbert being uh, close to 200 pounds coming into two, the match with me. I really don't see that for myself or Cody. I see Cody being a little closer to my size. I see Cody being a little more, um, you know, how do I say it? He's a little more um, agile, I guess you could say. He's a little more fluid. Uh, Dorino is ex extremely explosive and extremely... Uh, forward pressure. I think you have a little bit of that from Cody, but Cody's a lot more fluid than Dorino. So I think the scrambles will be a little more dynamic if we choose to get into those scrambles with Cody than they would Dorino, uh, given that his size is a little closer to mine and uh, he has a little bit more uh, fluidity in his movement. 
So that's a little bit of a difference. But both guys like to wrestle. Both guys like to uh, create scrambles to get the positions. So even though there's some differences, there's a lot of similarities between the two. Cody, how do you think that you match up with Dante? Um, I think I match up pretty well. Um, I mean, I feel like we kind of have somewhat similar styles. You know, he's extremely explosive and exp uh, and he's very strong. I mean, I always see him throwing around huge weights in the weight room. So um, I think he's like every time he fights, he's always going forward. He's always pushing the pace and he's always taking backs, you know, and that's how I see myself as well. So I feel like whoever just kind of slips up, it could, you know, it could go either way. It's going to be a tough fight and it's going to be, it's going to be wild. All right. So this is a 185 pound match. You guys both weighed in well under that, but that's just what Dante was going to fight Gilbert at. So he kept it that way. And, uh, 185 pound match, 15 minute, uh, no gi mission only match. Thank you very much, Dante and Cody. Thanks, Thanks Mike. Yeah, uh, so our next matchup is going to be Gabby Garcia versus Elizabeth Clay. This is a crazy matchup, but Gabby Garcia has obviously been nobody. She's been unbeatable in her division for so long. Number one, without a doubt, about as dom yeah, about as dominant as you can get. And but we got a new challenger coming up. Elizabeth Clay, twenty years old. She uh, qualified for ADCC all the way back when she was, I believe, sixteen years old. But she's been killing it lately. She beat Chelsea Lyons by. Uh, you hook at, eight, uh, at who's number one. She beat Kendall Rusing at Fight to Win. She tapped Maggie with a uh, Gogo Plata at who's number one. And she tapped Luisa Montero with a heel hook at Fight to Win. So she's really been on a roll, especially those were all in the post, like, I guess, post COVID era. Elizabeth, and then obviously at the last, who's number one after she tapped Maggie with the submission night she asked for Gabby. So let's go ahead and uh, go to that video. All right, so this is our uh, second women's match on the card between, you know, the biggest star probably in women's jiu-jitsu, Gabby Garcia, and an up-and-comer, Elizabeth Clay. Uh, it's really a battle of two different generations. Elizabeth Clay is, is technically still a brown belt, as we've seen with many people. That doesn't really matter in Nogi. We saw Ty Rotolo and Nikki Rod, I believe, were both blue belts at the last ADC. Ty might have already been a purple belt. But uh, she's going to Gabby Garcia. Gabby is a four-time ADCC champion. She's getting set up in there right now. Just one minute. So I guess we'll go to uh, you first. Uh, Liz, why is it that you wanted this match with Gabby? You had requested it. Um, you know, being a fighter, you got to fight the best people. And since I do the over 60 at ADCC now, obviously Gabby's won it four times. So I would hopefully be facing her and might as well get an idea of it now instead of waiting until ADCC. Gabby, what did you think uh, when you saw that Liz had asked for a match with you at, at who's number one last time? Um, I just, you know, I, I when she challenged me, um, I, I started looking like her fights. I know people talking a lot about her, you know, um, because she coming from like, uh, she be like good girls. And I think uh, when she challenged me, you know, um, I accept, like, oh, of course, let's go. And I start, like, training for a fight against her. I'm excited. But, yeah, it's a good challenge for her, <laughs> for me, too. Uh, Gabby, uh, I think a lot of people would have taken that as disrespect, but you seem like you liked it. Like, you're like, all right, somebody's calling me out. Let's go have a match. Is that how you felt about it? Uh, it's, it's different, like, when uh, I know when people disrespect, uh, I've, my opinion. I don't know if she disrespect me, but uh, I don't feel like uh, she disrespect me because it's different when um, you call people for for fight. Like, okay, hey, Gabby, like, and talking shit. I never see like she talking shit about me. She just like challenged the the most like you know 
four times ACC champion. And if I'm her, I challenge you too, you know, <laughs> why no? And have other girls challenge me to talk about this today. Uh, and the girls, ah, don't like me or talking shit about me. But I never saw, like, you know, she's, uh, she respect me. Uh, she just need to fight against me, like, you know, challenge for her because I'm bigger than her. I have, like, four ATCs and is a is a brave you know like for her part i think absolutely <laughs> but very brave no. yeah yes. uh liz how long have you been thinking about this match this has to be a match that you've uh known for a long time you're gonna have to have to have so you've probably been thinking about this for a while huh uh yeah it's been in, in the back of my head for probably a little over two years now so it wasn't something that i was like oh this is my next fight obviously but just like in the back of my head i was like oh this is this is a fight that at some point i'm gonna have um i didn't know like adcc have it or who's number one but i definitely it's been in the back of my head for a while that this is going to be a fight that uh that i wanted gabby it's got to be refreshing to have uh a new opponent right because you've been beating up on the same girls for a while it seems like so to have have somebody else coming up that you can challenge you it's got to be fun right yeah you know if you think about this fight like two years like come on <laughs> now <I'm> like, <laughs> she's scaring me <laughs> no but um yeah, I never challenge anyone in my career. Um, always I accept like when people challenge me. But yeah, one day like happens, you know, like I'm, I fight uh, ATC next year. Uh, but I have more girls now challenge me. But girls, I'm old, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm old, girls. <laughs> and for like be on top, you know, it's hard. It's hard like training and working and my business and everything but i try my best for this fight against elizabeth i know she's training a lot she need this this fight but i need this fight too you know like i training hard and the girls think like it's easy but it's, it's not it's not be easy fight <laughs> but I have more girls challenge me right now and not like elizabeth she respected me she she like these other girls know they go like in the internet and talking shit about me and this like, man, it's it's different when All you're right. talking shit about me. It's, it's <laughs> other Gabby. <laughs> so Liz, uh, obviously since you're an up and comer, a lot of people they see Gabby. Gabby's been at the top for so long, and they see you, they think it's a big mismatch. What would you have to say to those people? Um, you know, if two people want to fight, it should be able to happen. And as well, there's open weight. So you have absolute people fight that when you see people go absolute, you don't go, oh, it's a mismatch. Why is that happening? You know, if both people accept it and they're fine with the weight difference or whatever it is or belt difference, then it shouldn't matter. And this is what jujitsu is about is is people challenging themselves and seeing, you know, what can happen from it. All right, cool. Seems like a lot of mutual respect between the two of you. Uh, but as, like Gabby always says, Gabby, right. Uh, what do you say? Better her mom cries than mine. Yeah, uh, people like, uh, you know, make a lot of excuses um, for fight, you know, uh, like, ah, she's big or she's like open classes for this, you know, like when you accept like one super fight and okay, she's a brave, but she's a brown belt for me. Like I have like 12 years in my black belt. Imagine, you know, like the pressure in my shoulders too. And uh, all my fights, not, not, not against her, you know. It's not personal, but I enter for like kill my opponents, you know. Um, this is my style, Gabby style. This is my mind. And better, her mom cried in my mom. <laughs> this is like always in my mind when I enter for fight. Hey, everybody need to beat me, but it's not today. And better her mom cry than my mom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. So a uh, uh, very big time match here. We got Gabby's. Number one at over 62 kilos has been for basically forever, been ruling that division. Liz has climbed her way up to number three, so this is for the number one spot there. The, the event's called Who's Number One. We're going to be competing for Who's Number One. Gabby, Liz, thank you very much for everything. Thanks for having us. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you, Liz, for challenging me. Let's see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for accepting who's it. Not, uh, <laughs> let's see who's <laughs> the number one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. So with our next match, we're going into the co-main event. This was uh, – Craig Jones versus Roberto Jimenez. It's a 
Really exciting matchup. I think a lot of people are picking this one to be a potential fight of the night. Both these guys are always attacking. They're always uh, going for the submission. Uh, Roberto's got a great close guard, great back attacks. Craig is a lot of people try and box him in like as a leg lock guy, but he's good all over the place. He's got good triangles. Uh, he's got good back attacks. I mean, he guillotined Mason Fowler at ADCC. So this is a matchup I'm really looking forward to. Uh, Roberto's up and coming. He's just, I believe, 20 years old. He's beat a lot of good people Nogi lately. He's got like 25 matches in the COVID uh, era, but a few, like 15 of those are Nogi. He's beat Wagner. He's beat uh, Nicky Rod. He beat Tyro Tolo. So let's go ahead and uh, queue up this asset to get us into Craig Jones versus Roberto Jimenez. We got Roberto Jimenez on top there, Craig Jones on the bottom. So this is a matchup between number three at 88 kilograms, Craig Jones, and number four, Roberto Jimenez. Never competed against each other. But, uh, Craig, first off, uh, you fought just about everybody in this division multiple times, it seems like. Uh, how do you feel about this matchup with Roberto, who you've never fought before? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's exciting to have a, a fresh opponent, but it's also exciting to have, like, uh, an opponent that I'm a – a fan of myself, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like most of the jiu-jitsu community knows if Roberto is jumping into a competition, it's going to be nothing but exciting. You know what I mean? Whether that's gi, no gi, whatever. So from my perspective as a fan, I'm excited to have this match. How about you, Roberto? Do you feel the same way? Are you a fan of uh, Craig Jones' jiu-jitsu? Yeah, man. He's been able to make some really cool fights in the ADCC, and it's been – uh cool experience to to see him like come up as a a new well current like new generation current generation uh top athlete so it's uh i'm excited to be able to compete against craig tomorrow it's gonna be really fun honestly yeah it's interesting it seems like just yesterday that craig jones you know shocked everybody tapping leandro now we got craig jones the veteran going against the new generation here uh craig it's got to be a, a relief for you we, we're, we've grown so accustomed with your matches to seeing people just sort of trying to out uh, beat you by tactics, sort of survive, not really attempt a submission. Just uh, and you sort of have to chase people down to try and force them to engage. It's gotta, it's gotta be a good feeling for you knowing that you're gonna go in there and Roberto's gonna come after you, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, ultimately, like uh, the ideal victory would be to go in and dominate your opponent and finish him. But um, sometimes opponents will do really whatever it takes to win, and that might mean avoiding. Your opponent's uh, opponent's strengths to a point where the match might be boring and you might edge him out. But really, from what I've seen with Roberto, Roberto really goes off to sort of like a a pure victory. He goes out there to dominate them in all areas and go for the finish. And I feel like I ultimately try to do the same thing when I compete. For me, getting the submission victory is more important than just edging out a victory. So I think both of us uh, combined with that, it's going to produce an exciting match. Roberto, I have a feeling that you had the same philosophy towards the submission. If you want to win, it's really important to you that you get the submission for that finality, right? Yeah, the submission, in my opinion, is the only real way to win. All right, the only real way to win. Uh, Craig, what do you think people can expect out of this one? I don't really know. I mean, we, me and Roberto, I've obviously watched a lot of his matches. We've trained together a few times and stuff. So, yeah, based on how we train together in the gym, we always had – really exciting scrambles. I really don't know what to predict for the way the match goes. I feel like whoever wins, it is going to be a finish though, because I feel like 15 minutes, both of us pushing the pace. Someone's either going to catch the other person or the other person's going to fatigue. How many times did you guys train together? Um, we trained, I trained in Vegas earlier in the year with Roberto, I think two or three days. And then he was down in New York sometime this year. I can't remember the exact time, but uh, quite a few times actually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Roberto, does that, does that change anything for you? Like, were you like hesitant to take this because you guys train together, or does it not matter to you? Like, uh, what do you think about that? No, I I knew 
when before I even met Craig, I knew we were gonna fight one day, just according to the to like the weight classes. But I didn't really have like in in my mind, I didn't really think we were gonna fight this early on. I guess in in my career, so it's pretty cool, honestly. It's a uh, it's kind of surprising, and at the same time, we've had enough time to like get to know each other and also enough time to for each of us grow independently and i'm excited to see how uh how the progress has been for both of us all right craig so uh what are you thinking about this uh matchup going in is it uh something you're really excited for or what yeah for sure i mean yeah again based on my experience with roberto and based on being a fan of the sport for a long time, I think a guy like Roberto, he set his mark to be a legend of the sport. Like his goal is to be like a Bouchesh or a Gordon Ryan or a Marcelo. And I really do envision that taking place one day. So for me personally, now I feel like a bit of the older guy. So I'm trying to get a win over Roberto before he uh, gets too good and I get too old. All right. So this is a hundred or 205 uh, pound match. But Roberto weighed in way under that, but he doesn't really care about weight. He does all the absolutes and, every, and everything. But 205-pound match, 15-minute submission-only ma- uh, action. This is the co-main event. It'll be going before Gordon versus Mateus. Thank you guys very much. Let's go ahead Thanks. and let's go ahead and get into the next video, the Gordon Ryan versus Mateus video. Here it is, the main event. When you make something called who's number one, this is sort of the perfect match for you to get. Uh, it's essentially for the pound-for-pound pound number one spot because we have two number ones at their weight classes going at it, and Gordon is obviously pound-for-pound uh, pound number one. Mateus is top ten. And uh, this is a matchup I'm really looking forward to. It's it's almost happened before. Like John Danaher said in our uh, lead-up interviews, uh, it's never often you see two current ADCC champions going at it. So, Mateus, I'll, I'll kick it off with you. What are you thinking going into this match? I'm super excited for the match, like uh, always been. So that's it. I'm pretty excited. Thank you, Gordon, for accepting the match. Thank you for grappling. That's all. All right. Thank you for accepting it too, Mateus, because a lot of people out there don't really want to match with Gordon. Isn't that right, Gordon? That is correct. Everyone says they want to. On, it says they want to fight me on the internet, but then when the contract comes and the date comes, uh, they're nowhere to be found. Mateus, on the other hand, actually, we were supposed to fight like twelve times already, and we just have never fought. <laughs> so he's he's like signed the contract and has wanted to fight me every single time. So uh, I can't really can't really hate on that. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Um, Go ahead, Mateus. Unfortunately, like I think Gordon wanted to do no time limit, but with all this situation, you know, I wasn't training as much, but. We made it happen, so I'm excited. Mateus, what do you think uh, this match is going to play out like? Obviously, people have had a lot of trouble with Gordon in the past. What do you think you can do different to go out there and get victory? Mm, I uh, like I say again, Gordon's like a we cannot deny he's like the best, and uh, I always looking forward to a fight against the best. I think like uh, my, I think I can. I gotta keep the pressure on him. That's that's my game plan. Go for it. Uh, Gordon is the type of style like he doesn't stall. He always moving forward. So it's something that gonna make me push myself as well. So that's it. Looking, I think it, my style the way I he he being he fought a lot of guys with a lot of pressure. Uh, guys that are very explosive. Just think, I'm 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 different than the other guys. You know, I think I'm more explosive than some of the guys that he compete. And I'm pretty aware of the match. And 
you gotta be wary that guy like like Gordon. You know, you cannot slip on him because if you do one small mistake, he can take it. Gordon, how do you think this thing's gonna play out? Uh, you know, that was uh, you know, that was you know, pretty good. Um, you know, a viewpoint on on the match. Uh, you know, so too with Mateus. Uh, he, he's a guy who kind of similar to Lucas Barbosa, he kind of is relaxed, 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 and then just explodes into a move. So um, it's like at any point, like you could be, you know, playing an open guard. Next thing you know, you're bottom side control. So um, I, I think it's going to be uh, a battle of both, a uh, battle of tactics and uh, and technique as well. I think um, Mateus is obviously one of the best tacticians in the sport. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, his, his timing is very good. He's very fast. He's very explosive. And I think that, um, you know, I have the exact opposite game where my whole thing is to deny movement to my opponent. So I'm trying to shut down movement and he's tr trying to create movement into scramble. So it's going to be a battle of, uh, of him coming in and using his timing and me trying to get a hold of them and, and slow him down because I'm not very fast, but I'm, I know, I know moves. <laughs> Gordon, what do you think is Mateus' uh, biggest threat to you? Which which asset of his game is is the biggest danger to you going into this match? Uh, so you know his passing his passing is pretty strong. Um, he likes north south strangles. Um, so he does a very good job of shooting past the legs uh, right away. And then as you're going to recover on the transition to recovery, he shoots in north uh, north south strangles, uh, which can be very effective because you don't really carry any of your opponent's weight. So if it's actually on, it's, it's kind of hard to escape. Um, so I, I think, you know, just his positional pressure is passing uh, linear pressure, um, his ability to time guard passes and, uh, and, and shoot an opportunistic uh, North South strangles is probably, is probably my biggest thing to worry about. I'll, I'll say the same question for you, Mateus. What do you going into this? What do you think uh, you really got to look out for with Gordon? Um. Like like I say before, Gordon is a guy like he said himself. He's a he's a little slower, but don't don't slip on him. He's very. There's nothing that I can say. He proved you know like uh, he he's good everywhere, top bottle. He he people some people think like oh he's a leg lock, but he's not. The guy is like tap everyone in everything. So um, I just cannot. I feel I can just not stop in front of him, and uh, because the way he start getting things going, it's really hard to come back. I'm prepared for if that happens, and uh, he's he's very calm. He keep a good composure during the match, and it's something that a lot of people start feel frustrated because when you push the pace, someone like him have a lot of tools. He's like just keep his composure. He's ready for everything, and some people start get frustrated. And I think that's something that I can keep a good composure as well. If things don't start work, I, I don't get frustrated. I'm just super excited for this, you know. Um, uh, again, I always looking forward to compete against the best. I'm so happy this match finally happening, and uh, that that's all, you know. Yeah, Gordon, I think you proved a lot of people uh, wrong in the in the lead up to this. Everybody just calls you a trash talker, you know, says you're always starting shit. But I mean, you've been very polite towards Mateus. Uh, this sort of proves that if if somebody doesn't piss you off and get on your bad side, you'll be very uh, polite and respectful to him, huh? Yeah, I mean, and plus two, like, Mateus is, like, one of, like, literally one of the only guys who actually wants to compete against me. Like, nobody else in my weight division, everyone's like, oh, well, Gordon's not competing that much. Yeah, because I can't get a fucking match. So, Mateus is, the, like, one of the guys who actually wants to compete against me. Uh, and he's he's not always arguing about, you know, what the rule set is or this or that or the weight. He's just like, yes, I want to fight. And, you know, we show up to fight. So, um uh, what can you really say about that? Uh, he's one of the guys that, that wants to compete against the best guys in the world, and he, he actively does it and shows up. Mateus, uh, obviously you've won some big stuff before your ADCC champion. It's as big as it gets in Nogi, but what would uh, getting a win over the pound-for-pound pound number one, the current ADCC absolute champion, mean to you? It's me a lot, you know. Um, it's, uh, again, I, like people ask, oh, about the rank and stuff. I, I don't care. I feel I still feel like a... You cannot take if when I beat him, I cannot take what he's done. He's he won the ADCC, you know, um, absolute. That's very few people can do that. Cannot take that from him. I'm it's mean a lot to me. I'm I'm have the same mentality for any competition, you know. If it's open, I have the same mentality. Everyone, that's how I feel. I won't go to win. I prepare to win. Doesn't matter who it is, and of course, if it's someone like Gordon, give that special um, energy, give me a lot more energy to go there. Not not just to, uh, I don't have no hate up with him. People like, oh, 
kick his ass. I was like, man, stop the hate, you know, stop seeing the bad things, see the good things that the guy does, you know. So I have nothing. I just want to go there, win, like in any other competition. And of course, if someone with the name as Gordon have, uh, I don't see like, oh, just because he's the pound for pound, I see like, man, what he done, how many guys he beat. I want to go there and prove that, not for, for people, but for myself, that I can. I can I can beat him, so that that's it. Matthias, before I go back to uh, Gordon, is uh, you brought up the ADCC absolute? You didn't enter last time. Is that going to be something you think you're going to be going after next time? Oh yes, definitely. I, I was going to do the absolute, but I, I had some. I don't know what happened with my hip, and uh, I think in the end of the the match, I think Craig had a, a Kimura on me. I just feel pop a little bit. Didn't hurt at all. But and then I felt my elbows got a little swollen and stuff, and my hip was really bothering me. So that's why I didn't enter it. But for sure, it's something that I really wanna wanna do next year. All right. Before uh, looks like we're just about running out of time. I always like to end it. I let Gordon. Uh, we've been very polite so far. I let Gordon give a little shout out to the haters before we go, because we know a lot of people will be watching tomorrow night, hoping that you lose. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, you know, if you guys are gonna, if you guys are gonna hope I lose, at least tune in to watch me lose or tune in to watch me win. Either one, uh, just fucking tune in so you, uh, so Flo can make some money and they can pay me. <laughs> yeah, that's important. Uh, all right, this is this is a crazy one. I, I'm really looking forward to it. This is, I, I believe, Gordon's probably, I think, without question, Gordon's biggest challenge since ADCC versus another ADCC champion, Mateus Denise. This type of thing doesn't happen all the time, guys. Make sure you tune in. Tomorrow night, 8 o'clock Eastern. Mateus Denise, number one, 88 kilograms, ADCC champion, 2019 at 88 kilograms versus ADCC double gold champion and number one pound for pound and 99 kilograms, Gordon Ryan. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. See you guys. All right, that's it for the press conference. Make sure you tune in tomorrow night, 8 o'clock Eastern. Eight matches, all eight of those matches that we just showed are going to be going down. Make sure you tune in on flowgrappling.com.